every iconic monster truck starts with a concept. Even the less iconic ones all begin in the design phase. After all, it's how the truck takes shape and ultimately ends up as to what we see on the circuit today. But I had just one question that this video had to answer. What are the most unique, creative, and coolest concepts for monster trucks that either already existed or never came to fruition? Well, today, that's exactly what we are doing. So without further ado, here are the top 10 coolest monster truck concepts. Number 10, Gravedigger Grim. You might be surprised at our number 10 pick, but trust me, the rest of the concepts we have on this list are gonna blow your mind. Gravedigger has had a myriad of iconic designs over the years, from the legendary anniversary schemes like the 25th and 30th anniversary, to even some of the fan favorite designs like Green Ghost, Anderson's Chrome design from 2016, and many, many more. But this design has a very interesting backstory. From 2004 to 2006, Hot Wheels released a unique design of Gravedigger, which has been nicknamed Gravedigger Grim. Grim is the official name for these skeleton creatures seen on the roofs of Gravedigger and seen on other promotional material, as well as in the diecast line, most recently with the truck and action figure toy line. This design took elements of the iconic Gravedigger design and put Grim as the main focus on the side of the panel. Most of the mist is gone and the tombstones no longer feature the names of other trucks as do all other Gravedigger designs. The rumor was that this was supposed to be a real life design that would debut alongside a special version of Max D we are about to mention, but for whatever reason, this never came to fruition. This may have led to the creation of Green Ghost Gravedigger, which did become a reality and still is one of the most memorable and recognizable Gravedigger designs of all time. I do like the design of this truck and somewhat wish we did get this in real life. Number 9, Red Maximum Destruction. In relation to Gravedigger Grim, Maximum Destruction was supposed to debut a new scheme alongside Gravedigger in 2006. According to its designer, Neil Vandenberg, the design was not only supposed to hit the diecast scene, but also the real life circuit. In an Instagram post about the concept, Vandenberg would state, This design never saw the track, but I was thrilled that it made its way into the Hot Wheels toy line. 06 was also the year that Monster Jam and I redesigned the Gravedigger with the green ghost and green flames in the graveyard. I must have had fire on the brain that year. Would have been awesome if we produced this body and it went head to head with GD Green Ghost. The design is very unique and gives a new fresh take on the already iconic Maximum Destruction design. Vandenberg would go on to state his design process of coming up with this new design. This truck still sports the original design concept. The idea was to replace all the grey metal areas of the design with flames slash lava. So the logos and the stripe of metal on the hood have been replaced with flowing flames like the flames that were always on the front fenders and leading up through the cab. I honestly wish this became a reality. It would have been super fitting to have the two biggest names in Monster Jam running two new colourful designs out on the circuit. At the very least, it did become a diecast and was produced for many years in both 164 and 124 scale. It's also believed to be a precursor to the now iconic Candy Apple Red Max D that Neil Elliott debuted at Master Jam World Final 16. Number 8, Robo Shark. Giving some of the independent teams a little bit of love, RoboShark is a truck from Terry Woodcock's Freedom Racing. It would first debut with a regular body with an intricate paint scheme, which was painted by Thomas Zachary in 1993. Even before this version debuted, Terry would want to dream bigger. Concept art drawn in 1991 shows the original plan for RoboShark, showcasing a shark head rather than a standard Chevy hood, as well as fins adorning the sides and the top of the truck. An attempt at creating the head out of foam was made and the team got as far as actually sculpting out the mold of the head, as you can see on the screen now with all the build pictures. However, with high demands and their busy work schedule and conflict with the fiberglass provider, the truck never advanced further than this attempt. 
It's a shame too that it would never come to fruition because it's easily one of the coolest ideas for a monster truck. Number seven, future foot. What in the hell is a future foot, you may be asking. Well, to be honest, up until researching for this video, I had never heard nor seen of this truck. Future Foot appears to be the unofficial precursor of Maximum Destruction, in that Maximum Destruction's body was a futuristic SUV, and the same basic idea was the same with Future Foot. It was essentially Bigfoot from the future. Its origin seems to derive from a cancelled television show that was supposedly in development with TNN and the Bigfoot team, which would have been called Mega Monsters. Essentially, the premise of the show was a live action show featuring Bigfoot and Snakebite on opposing sides, with Bigfoot being accompanied by Future Foot and another scrapped concept truck called Brass Eagle, while Snakebite would be accompanied by Shark Crusher and Junkyard Beast. Again, both cancelled trucks. Ironically enough, Shark Crusher bears a little bit of a resemblance to Robo Shark. These trucks would battle with paintball guns. Funnily enough, from the Brass Eagle Company that one of the trucks was named after. Future Foot's design blueprints, if you can even call it that, was included in a promotional brochure that reveals some pretty interesting details. Along with the things like the paintball cannons and general chassis information, the body would be tearaway fiberglass, which is strange because fiberglass bodies were common during the time this show was going to be created. However, the show was cancelled and all the trucks that were planned to be created never came to fruition. In saying that, part of the future foot fiberglass shell was created but was never finished. It's certainly one of the most strange concepts for a truck I think I've ever seen, and that's why it had to be on this list. Number 6, Octonator. Octonator is a cancelled truck that most likely would have debuted in 2019 if it was ever intended to debut in real life. Its original working name was Kraken and takes on the look of an octopus with a large head in the center of the body, with its tentacles wrapping around the truck and protruding outwards. However, due to Team Tom Foolery's truck, also called Kraken, which would start running in Monster Jam around the time this truck was conceptualized, and was similar in concept to Kraken, despite being modeled after an octopus. As a result, the truck was renamed to Octonator, and honestly, I think the name is a lot better considering it was themed around an octopus and not a squid like Kraken was. Anyway, while the truck has yet to debut on the circuit, it has made its way into the diecast world as well as the virtual world. Octonator has been produced in Spin Master's diecast line every year and also was featured as a playable truck in Monster Jam Steel Titans 2. With Megalodon still being an integral part in Monster Jam and Kraken's inception somewhat putting the original idea of Octonator to a halt, the truck will most likely never see the light of day outside of the diecast and video game world. But I wouldn't be opposed to seeing it out on the circuit. Number 5, Apex. Apex is another cancelled truck designed by Nicholas Narcheski that may have been intended to compete in Monster Jam. Its design is quite unique, with it having many sharp and triangular panels, and even had zoomy headers coming out the side of the truck. Its sharp and small, yet menacing headlights and taillights just adds to the awesome look of this truck. Some believe that the name insinuates that it is the precursor to Thunder Roarus, mainly due to Thunder Roarus being referred to as the Apex Predator. But I think it is just merely a coincidence, since the Apex Predator is a well-known term mainly used to describe the top predator in the food chain. Unfortunately, not more is known about this truck, and it's really only been seen in the form of this render. Number 4, Inferno. This concept of Inferno is yet another concept designed by Nicholas Narcheski. The truck's overall design concept is a strange one, because it takes three elements from three other trucks, obviously taking the name from Inferno, but also takes the overall design from another concept that Nicholas designed called Sucker Punch, which either was the result of or would go on to inspire the radical rescue revamp 
seen mainly in Monster Jam's diecast line. Radical Rescue, for those who don't know, was originally a fire truck themed monster truck that only ran a few seasons in the 2000s before it was ultimately retired. And in 2018, Radical Rescue made a return in the diecast form with a whole new body and look. That new body, of course, is the exact same as Sucker Punch and Inferno. And it is unclear if Sucker Punch or this new Radical Rescue came first. Anyway, Inferno seems to be a combination of all these elements. It keeps the same old fire truck body seen on Sucker Punch and the Radical Rescue toy, along with featuring white wall BKT tires and gold detailing in the letters, on the ladder, and on the rest of the truck. The reason as to why it's named Inferno is most likely down to Mike Harper now owning the Radical Rescue trademark and debuting his own interpretation of the truck earlier this year. The truck looks absolutely incredible, and it's a shame that it hasn't been made into a real truck yet. The entire design looks absolutely incredible, and I'm sure if it were to debut in real life, it would become a fan favorite to all who would get to see it. Number 3, all four zombie variants. 2016 would see a lot of new concepts for either new designs or new trucks altogether. However, probably the most eye-catching and interesting concepts, aside from all the new trucks, was the four new zombies that were supposed to debut. Those new zombie trucks were the yellow zombie, nicknamed the female zombie, or the man-eater zombie, burn victim zombie, skeleton zombie, and the biker zombie. All of these iterations had a different theme that made them not just basic recolors of the regular zombie theme. The yellow or female zombie was intended to show off more of a feminine character as well as having a severed arm inside the jaw of the truck. The burn victim zombie gave the impression that this zombie was burnt with the arms grabbing the top of its skull. The skeleton zombie kind of speaks for itself and the biker zombie took on the persona of an undead biker with an American bandana, popped out eye, facial hair, legs dangling out the back of the truck, and the guts popping out the side of the truck. For whatever reason, only two of these trucks ever hit the track. Well, sort of. Back at World Final 16, the freestyle uncle was the zombie invasion, which included six zombies tearing it up. For reasons that are unknown, the lights were dim red, and after the uncle was completed, almost all of the trucks, or at least the unique ones, were unrecognizable due to the trucks landing on each other and tearing the bodies up. And no one truly knows what they would have looked like other than these few photos. As a result, only two of these designs would debut the following year. Skeleton Zombie was relatively easy and debuted as the render shown. The Female Zombie would debut as well, only with all of the feminine aspects like the eyelashes, ponytail and nail paint and the severed arm was removed effectively just making it a yellow zombie. The Burn Victim Zombie was actually intended to debut in Mexico City later in 2016, but that never became a reality, and the Biker Zombie would never debut after the Encore. As a result, fans have been longing to see these new zombies out on the circuit, but I imagine that this will never come to fruition. In saying that, Spin Master released all four of these zombies as 164 and now 124 scale diecasts over the last year or two, with them being almost exact replicas to the renderings of the real trucks. Again, I still wish these became a real truck outside of the Encore but having them in the diecast form is a fairly solid compromise. Number 2, Gravedigger the Legend Ghost Body. Before we continue, no, I'm not referring to the purple GDL concept. So put down your pitchforks, and as the youth say, let me cook. Gravedigger the Legend's whole design is pretty basic and doesn't need to be changed that much. It's a homage to Dennis's past, as well as showing newer fans the roots of the now black and green wrecking machine. However, this GEL cons- oh shit, how did this end up here? <clears throat> this Gravedigger the Legend concept 
aim to do the best of both worlds. The truck still keeps the iconic blue and silver body. However, Gravedigger's mascot Grimm tears away at the legend's body and paint to reveal a much newer Gravedigger hood, only with the same colors as the legend to fit more in line with the theme of the truck. It almost entirely states the message of the truck and its purpose. Give fans a glimpse into the past, but tearing away to show a more modernized and fresh look for the fans. The only, and I mean only gripe I have with this design, is that I don't think there would be any spot on the truck to put the logo, since Grimm takes up almost all of the truck. Outside of that, this concept looks fantastic. I'm sure if it was ever conceived to be introduced to the circuit, it likely would have cost a fortune, and I can understand why it never would come to fruition. Number 1, Captain's Curse Pirate Ship Concept Out of all of the concepts we've looked at today, while it might not be my favourite of the bunch, it's certainly the most outlandish, most unique, and coolest looking concept of them all. Captain's Curse has been a fan favorite name in Monster Jam since its inception. Its iconic 1941 Willy's body complements its classy design and confirms why it's a memorable name. But what happens when you take away its iconic Willy's body and replace it with something more outlandish while still keeping the theme of the truck? Well, most would argue that's what Pirate's Curse is but it more defines this concept. The truck's body resembles that of a pirate ship, filled with many key features you'd see on an actual pirate ship, from the captain's steering wheel to the deck of the ship, along with masts and sails as well as cannons on the side of the truck. The truck just screams in creativity. To be honest, I think this would be better suited to the Pirate's Curse name, because even though that this was most likely done before Pirate's Curse was even tramped up, I think that this would have complemented the name much more, especially alongside the original Captain's Curse. The concept's original creator at the time of writing this video is unknown, but to whoever made this design, I love the creativity and fresh ideas you brought to this truck. And in all honesty, all of the designers for these concepts deserves a special mention. Because for all of these designs that never became a reality, it is their work that continues to be the driving force behind all of the new trucks that we see on the circuit today. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon with some more Monster Truck content.